Do you have a team without an HR department? Or maybe your HR department is someone who just got the job because they were already in the office. Or maybe you have a well-staffed HR department and are just looking for outside professional advice. Whatever the case, HRTG can help. HRTG can help with handbooks, interactive training workshops, employee relations that include resolving issues and answering questions, performance reviews, and writing compliance and policies. To simply put it, they cover everything from hiring to retiring. Do what you're good at and let HRTG do what they are great at, help you with your HR needs. Go to scalinguph2o.com forward slash HR to find out more. Welcome to Scaling Up H2O, the podcast where we scale up on knowledge so we don't scale up our systems. I'm Trace Blackmore, your host for Scaling Up H2O. And Nation, there is just so much stuff going on. If you are a member of NACE, the National Association of Corrosion Engineers, you want to be on the lookout for their Corrosion Technology Week. That's going to be the week of October 17th. And if you are involved in NACE and any one of their technical committees, this is your opportunity to learn exactly what their committees are working on, what standards they're working on, and how you can help and truly understand what is coming out of those committees. If you want to learn more about that, you can go to our show notes page and we will point you directly to that website. Something else that I am so looking forward to, it is my favorite event all year because I get to see so many of you, and we didn't get to do that last year, is going to the Association of Water Technologies Conference, and that is just around the corner, and it is 100% in person this year. It's going to be held in Providence, Rhode Island, September 22nd through 25th. So if you have never been to an AWT convention, you have no clue what you are missing. And if you have been to one, you know you do not want to miss it. So you can also go to our show notes page and we will take you directly to that site so you can sign up. There are still spots available in the hotels, but they are going quickly. So if you want to have a convenient location at a hotel where you don't have to drive very far, if at all, go ahead and register today. Now, if you are a business owner, you're going to want to make arrangements to arrive one day earlier because that's when they're holding their business owners meeting. Folks, this is when they get people together to talk about different experiences and give you tools that will allow you to run your businesses in a different way. Maybe there's just that one nugget that you're going to pick up that changes everything else. So if you're a business owner, you're going to want to attend that. That information is also on our show notes page. Well, folks, my favorite episode is today. I'm talking about Pinks and Blues episodes. That is when I answer questions from the Scaling Up Nation, and we're going to hear from somebody right now who has a question. Hello, Trace, and hello, Scaling Up Nation. I think I have a question that will help many folks here. Many of us are lucky enough to have reporting systems that will calculate this data for us. But for those who don't, what do things like revenue, gross profit, and margin mean? And how can we calculate those things manually if we don't have a reporting system doing it for us? Thanks in advance. Well, thank you so much for that question. And I know a lot of people have a hard time asking a question like that because it's just expected that we know terms like revenue, gross profit, margin, operating profit, net profit. I mean, come on, who doesn't know that stuff? Well, I'm here to tell you, I work with enough companies that Many, many people do not know the proper ways to use 
those items. So thank you for asking that question. And even if you do have software that is helping you figure that stuff out, I promise if you truly understand where that information comes from and also realize that you are only getting one sliver of the pie and you're not able to make a full decision based on the entire picture, when you understand all these things, it is just going to laser charge how you are able to make decisions. As I just mentioned, so many people that I've worked with think that if they sell something for $2 and it only costs them a dollar, they just made a dollar profit. Well, that's not true. And how much did they make? And what's the margin on that? And how can you tell if that's where you're supposed to be? And that's what we're going to talk about today. How much profit do we really need to make? And do we really know what those numbers are? Knowing information like this allows us to understand where we are, and it allows us to understand where we're going. It allows us to make better decisions, and it allows us to see if the decisions that we are making are good ones. Do we need to make slight tweaks on those decisions so we can get better? Let's all go into business together. All right, we're going to open up a restaurant. Now, my business coach, Tim Fulton, would kill me if I said I was going to open up a restaurant because I remember him telling me that the restaurant industry has the highest failure rate. Now, why is that? Well, I think it's the same reason that we're having this podcast episode and the topics that we're talking about today. Many people are really good technicians, or in our restaurant's case, chefs. However, knowing how to run a kitchen is only one aspect of the business. And when you run your own business, you have to be responsible for everything that goes on in that business, not just the kitchen. And for this reason is why great chefs are likely to fail when they open up their own businesses. Now, the premise of the book called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber is all about this. He talks about people that are great technicians or chefs, think they know how to run a great kitchen, they know how to run a great program, and they do, but they don't understand all the things around running a successful business and when they don't learn those items, they're not spending their time and their assets where they need to be spent, and that is why they fail. So let's get back to our restaurant. We're going to call it Scaling Up Burgers, and our signature burger is called the Boilermaker because it has these scorching hot jalapenos right on top of the burger. Now, let's say we're going to sell this burger for $7. Customer comes in, they order the burger, we prepare it, we give it to him. Voila, we just made $7, right? Yeah, we didn't make $7. And that's what we're going to talk about. Let's cost out that burger. Let's say the meat is $5.99 a pound and we're selling a half pound burger. So that's $3 in meat. The bun, it's an artesian bun. Let's say it's 30 cents a bun. The cheese is 25 cents. And all the toppings on the burger, including our scorching hot pickled jalapeno peppers, giving the burger its signature name, all comes to a dollar. So if you add all those things up, we get a grand total of $4.55. But we still have a few things that we had to buy in order to sell this burger, so we're not done costing it out. The wrapper that it comes in, let's say that's seven cents. And of course, that burger doesn't make itself. So let's say we're paying somebody $10 an hour to work in the kitchen. And for argument's sake, let's say they can make 20 burgers in an hour. So if we divide that out, that's going to be 50 cents in labor cost. So we add that together, our 57 cents to our $4.55. We find out that the real cost of that burger is $5.12. Now let's answer some of the questions that our caller asked. What is the gross margin of that? 
So to talk about gross margin, we kind of need to know what gross margin is. So this is a company's net revenue minus the cost of goods. So what we sold the burger for minus what it cost us to make the burger. Cost of burger is everything we just added up, including the labor. So the gross margin, in order to get that, you're going to take the selling price of the burger and then subtract out the cost of goods and then divide that by the selling price. So let's go ahead and do that. $7 is what we sold the burger for. We're going to subtract $5.12, which is our cost of goods sold, and we're going to take that sum and divide that by $7. Folks, that gives us a 27% margin or a 27% gross profit. Now, I think that's why numbers are confusing, too, because there's so many ways to say the exact same thing. By the way, That is horrible for a restaurant. The food cost for a restaurant should not be any more than 30%. So you can see how a chef that didn't know this information could be selling a ton of burgers. He's thinking that he's doing great, but in fact, he is selling himself out of business. If he knew what his food cost should be, less than 30%, and he just did the math and he figured out that his food cost is 73%, I think some alarms are going to go off. But so many people, so many chefs, so many technicians don't look at that information and they think, hey, if I buy it for this and sell it for a higher number, it has to be profitable, right? And as we're learning in this episode, that's not necessarily the case. By knowing these numbers, the chef does not have to suffer bankruptcy. He can make some changes right now so he can start becoming profitable. So what about that little closed loop account that's on your way to another account that hardly uses any product? That has to be profitable, right? Well, I don't know. What is it actually costing you? What are all the things that you have to put into that account in order to properly service it? Product, time, but what about all that other stuff that allows us to do the things that we do? Your vehicle, your training, insurance on the vehicle, the building that your company is in, the electricity that powers that building, the liability insurance you have to have or you wouldn't have that customer to begin with, all the licenses that you have to have to do business. And I'm sure we could keep going and we can think of dozens of more things. Well, all of those things are called operating expenses. These don't really get bigger as you put on new business, but as you put on more new business, they have to become bigger to support the larger amounts of business that you have. Most people don't think about operating expenses, but if we don't have those items, we don't have a business. Once you subtract out the operating expense from the gross profit, what you have left is the net profit. And many of us do not know what the actual profit is on the accounts that we are charged with servicing. I think if you ask any CFO worth anything, they will tell you the only number that we discuss today that matters anything is profit. Profit is what matters. Profit is what we get to put in the bank. Profit is what allows us to grow the company, to give pay raises, to make the company better. Can you begin to see that if you don't know the actual cost of what we do, you are not able to make the best decisions? So here's my call to action. If you are somebody who is responsible for accounts, be responsible for knowing the numbers surrounding those accounts and learn what it is you don't know that you don't know. We just talked about revenue, gross profit, and net profit. 
which is what makes up a profit and loss statement or also called an income statement. Again, 50 different terms for the exact same thing. And I think that's why finances are so complicated, but they're really not. If you learn some key metrics, you will start to see how all these things come together. And then you start adding more metrics to them. And folks, it is amazing what your own data will tell you and what decisions you have to make. Here are two books that I'm going to recommend for you to learn more about these numbers. The first one is called Financial Intelligence, A Manager's Guide to Knowing What the Numbers Really Mean. It's by authors Berman and Knight. And they actually go through and they break out how to read some of these statements and what you need to do when you know that information. It's a great read. It's very simple. And another one that I think is great is one that's called Accounting for Non-Accountants. That's by Wayne LaBelle. And he goes through pretty much every equation that you are going to see, and he breaks it down and allows you to see what those numbers are made up from so you can make decisions from that. If you've been in my math class, you see that's how I teach math. I don't teach you how to work the math problems. I teach you why the math problems are set up the way that they are so they can start making sense to you, and then you can go work those problems. Well, that's how Accountants for Non-Accountants is laid out. And if you've enjoyed my class, I think you'll enjoy that book. So if you are somebody responsible for accounts, that's what I am suggesting for you. Now, if you own the business, I've got a challenge for you as well. And here it is. And this might be a little bit scary. Share your financial data. Oh my goodness, I'm going to share with my team my financial data. Yes, absolutely. Why would you do that? Because these are the people that have the boots on the ground that are making the day-to-day decisions that are creating those numbers anyway. I know it's scary at first, and there's ways that you can do it to make it less scary, to make you less vulnerable. And when you learn how to do that, when you start sharing those numbers and you make people responsible for those numbers that you are sharing, they're able to make decisions on the spot that will affect those numbers. And because they have better decisions, because you've shared those numbers with them, they are going to make better decisions. Just think, you wouldn't give somebody a gun, blindfold them, and expect them to hit a bullseye. Well, if you're not sharing these numbers with your team and teaching them what they mean and how what they do affects those numbers, that is exactly what you were doing. I will admit when I first started my business, I didn't respect the numbers the way I do now. I didn't find them fun. In fact, I found them a distraction. I would much rather talk to a customer or troubleshoot an issue in an account. That is my jam. I love going into an account, knowing there is an issue, and knowing that I will find that issue and figure out how to get it fixed. That is my most favorite thing to do in the field of water treatment, and that's not numbers. Numbers, when I first got started in business, I felt took me away from that. So I avoided the numbers. And because I avoided the numbers, I felt like I fell so far behind from keeping all my numbers together that I could never catch up. And the truth is, I never did catch up. I wasn't able to do what I needed to do based on the knowledge that I had. And as you've heard me say before, I didn't know what I didn't know But what I decided to do was put myself into a room of people that knew different things than I did. So I had a situation where I was going to inject myself in to learn what it is that I didn't know. And folks, there is a ton of stuff that I don't know. I'm hoping I'm figuring out more and more of that stuff so I can learn it. But that's what this group did. And this group was the mastermind that I joined. 
The mastermind was led by Tim Fulton, my personal business coach now, and Tim led that group for 10 years. And we would always have different topics that would come up. He would have different speakers that would come in. He would have us share our business on how things were going. He would have us share our numbers with the group. And that's what really got me to get my numbers together because now I have a room full of my peers. And if I tell them I didn't have my financial data together, I was letting them down and I didn't want to do that. But I couldn't get my numbers to a place where I could get the information they were asking for. So I asked somebody who was really good with the numbers if I could buy them lunch and they could help train me on what I didn't know I didn't know. He then helped me. You've heard from him, Mike Iverson. In fact, you're going to hear from him again in a couple of weeks. Mike Iverson is my fractional CFO. I met him through my mastermind group. And he knows numbers better than I could ever even hope to know numbers. But I've got somebody on my team that can help me, that can guide me, and I don't have to know everything. But I do have to align myself in a situation where I can start learning what it is that I didn't know. So my secret weapon was joining this mastermind group. That's where I met Tim Fulton. That's where I met my CFO. That's where I learned so many things over the last 10 years. Now, Tim no longer leads that mastermind group, and Tim and I have a private coaching relationship, and I now have the honor of running my own mastermind, the Rising Tide Mastermind, and this is where I put water treaters together so they can start learning the things they need to know that they don't know they don't know. And when you get people in a room of like-minded people and the overall goal is to make each other better while we're working on ourselves, it is amazing what happens. I've been doing the Rising Tide Mastermind for about two years now, and to see the growth of the individuals that show up each and every week, it is just fantastic. My friend Chuck Hamrick says that he has had over 30% profit increases just doing some of the things that we talk about in the Rising Tide Mastermind. Just think, if you know your numbers, you can try something new and you can instantly see what that effect is. So the next time you buy a burger in a restaurant, I want you to think, how much did this burger really cost the person that owns the restaurant? And the next time you service that account, I want you to think about the same thing. How much is it really costing you How much is it really costing your company for you to be there? How much is your time worth and are you using your time at its highest and best value? We all know that one thing is for sure, improving what we know, decreasing what it is that we don't know, constantly challenging ourselves to get better is us being at our highest and best value. And to help us out with that, here's James McDonald. Hello, Scaling Up Nation. The next James's challenge as we grow as an industrial water treatment professional, drop by drop, is... Install or change out corrosion coupons. Corrosion coupons, with all their advantages and disadvantages, are a tried and tested method of detecting corrosion trends in water systems. Their importance can be underestimated and forgotten. We get busy and think, I'll change those out next time. Or we get short-sighted and say, I could be trying to sell my next account in the time I spend changing out corrosion coupons each month. Take time this month to think about the corrosion coupons in the water systems you manage. Do they have the proper flow rate? Are metallurgies installed in the proper order? Be sure to have a plan to change them out in a timely manner and ensure you have corrosion coupon racks on all appropriate systems. 
Be sure to share your experience on LinkedIn by tagging it with hashtag JC21 and hashtag ScalingUpH2O. This is James McDonald, and I look forward to seeing what you share. Well, thanks, James. I also want to thank the listener for that question. Without that question, we would not have had that discussion. And where at the very beginning when that question was asked, it seemed like a very simple question, but I hope you see it is a very complex question. And the more that we know about our numbers, the more we can do, the better we can do it, and the more profit that we can make while we are doing it. So here's the bottom line. When you unpack the real cost of what it is that you do, you can truly see where you should be spending your time. And speaking of time, I'll have another brand new episode for you next week. Until then, take care, Scaling Up Nation. Nation, the mastermind is wildly successful and the only thing missing is you. Go to scalinguph2o.com forward slash mastermind to see if this is the group that you have been waiting for and the group that can push you to your next level of success.